Yasuo, I'm Michael Angelakis and welcome to Out of the Blue. G'day, I'm Michael Keelan. Now, Mike, it'd be fair to say we've covered a fair amount of territory during this series. We have, Mickey. We've come all the way from Sejuna, the place of my birth, to Adelaide. And we said it time and time again during the series, the people we've met have just been fabulous. And you're going to meet one of the icons of the industry down in the lakes in Kurong, Henry Jones, that fishes those local waters. And now that wouldn't be a bad place to live down there. I reckon Henry's on a good thing. I mean, it's, it's a place where the Murray actually meets the sea. Seafood, wildlife, bird life. Absolutely. Pretty a, tran good. a tranquil spot. And also the wonderful product that comes out of those waters. The cockles, the yabbies, and also the lovely variety of freshwater fish. And of course, we'll be looking at all those things, plus cooking up some wonderful recipes on our final episode of Out of the Blue. Matthew Flinders continued to map and name everything he saw along the unknown coast of Australia. Two days after leaving Kangaroo Island, at about four in the afternoon, the lookout called down from the masthead that a sail was ahead. It was Nicholas Bodan in the Geograph. The French had no idea another expedition was mapping the unknown coast of Australia. Bodan must have been very disappointed to find out Flinders had been the first to map and name the unknown coast of Australia. The two captains met and exchanged information. Flinders called this meeting place Encounter Bay. Bodan continued west, retracing the coast charted by Flinders before scurvy forced him to turn back and return to Port Jackson. Flinders was overjoyed to have beaten Bodan to much of the southern coastline, but the meeting with the Frenchman must have distracted him because when he sailed south from Encounter Bay, he sailed away from the entrance to the river he always dreamt of finding. The river that could carry him into the heart of this great land, the mighty Murray River. The Murray River is one of the longest rivers in the world. It begins its journey in the Australian Alps and flows west for 2,400 kilometres before turning south and running into the sea at Goolwa in South Australia, just 20 kilometres from where Bodan and Flinders had met in Encounter Bay. To this dry continent, the Murray River is its lifeblood. The mighty Murray supports important wetlands and aquatic ecosystems. Just before the Murray reaches the sea, it spreads out into lakes and long fingers of water reach out and run parallel to the ocean. This unusual strip of fresh water is known as the Coorong and it's a bird watcher's paradise. The Coorong is also the home of a mate of ours. His name is Henry Jones and he's the fourth generation to professionally fish this wonderful part of the world. Much of the Coorong is protected as a national park, so there's only a handful of licensed fishermen like Henry who are allowed to make a living catching fish. The freshwater fish in the Coorong and adjoining lakes are great to eat. There's also another delicacy that abounds in these waters, fresh water lobster, or yabbies as we call them. Look at the yabbies. Looks like there's one, two, three. With a boat full of fish and yabbies, it's back to Henry's place for lunch. Hold on for a wild ride through the reeds. Oh, 
Have a look at the catch. Not bad for a morning's work. That's all. Bag of oh, got That's me. a Greek recipe too. You got me. Henry, I don't know a lot about the fish here. What have, what have we caught in the Kurong and the, the lake system here? Well, this, this is a selection of all the species we catch. This is Mulloway. We catch about 70% of the Mulloway that's caught in South Australia in the lakes in Kurong. This is kelp or uh, golden perch. That's our the top price. That's yeah. that's the, our major fish. It's a handsome fish. Beautiful fish. Yeah. Lovely eating. It's a black brim uh, caught in the Kurong. Uh, we catch about 70% of the black brim that's caught in South Australia. The flounder, we catch about 80% of the flounder that's caught in South Australia. Nearly all the flounder we caught is caught in the Kurong, the green, the, the green back flounder. That's a beautiful, mm, that's a, these are premium superb. table fish, these are. This is probably my favourite fish to eat. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful fish to eat. This is an introduced species, redfin, but uh, the market is, is uh, quite good for them. Uh, you're talking $7, $11 a kilo for uh, redfin, so that's coming up. And the Kurong mullet, well, that's our, uh, the bulk of our fish that we catch is Kurong mullet. That's um, Around about 70% of the fish are uh, mullet caught in South Australia are caught by the lakes and Kurong fishermen. It's a dog's life down here on the Kurong. Henry's Labrador is having a quick swim before lunch. But he'd better be careful, one of our yabbies might jump out and nip him on the nose. Now, Henry, yeah, mate. We, we'll give you the yabbies if you let us know what, what secret ingredients are going into the pot. OK, mate, it's, it's, a, it's a recipe from handed down from my grandfather. Oh, a little right. bit of dill and about a hand, two handfuls of salt. Put a bit of dill in first. Mm, well, yep. fresh herbs, dill. That's an underrated herb, isn't it, dill? Just, and the Not seeds as well. Because that's pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Two handfuls of salt. Mm. I'm having a job here. Mm. Okay, I think we're ready, mate. All right. I think that I think they're happy to go oh, in, aren't they? In they go. Eh? Terrific. Pot back on. And how long does it take, Henry, roughly? Well, I, I just like to bring it back to the boil. Right. So don't cook them too much, otherwise they get a bit tough. So just just bring it back to the boil, and they're ready to go. Right. So, and you can see they're starting. To float themselves to the surface. Got that nice pink colour, and uh, they're, they're just about ready now. That's Henry, what are you doing down there? It's important that we cool them down quickly, otherwise they lose their moisture and go tough. So we cool them down as quickly as we can, and they remain nice and succulent. We haven't lost any, here, have we? No, 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 no. No, he's a careful fisherman, Henry. Is. Very careful fisherman. Have a look at that. So you don't actually eat them hot. No, no. Right. Look at that. Oh, Lovely yeah. flavour and colour. Oh, look Have a look at that. Okay. So I reckon Henry could show us how to peel a yabby. Pretty simple. Just extract the tail. A couple of little things around here. Mm -hmm. Out comes the tail. Take out the... Intestinal tract? Intestinal that's what Henry tray. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. There you are. So that's, that's how we eat them. Yep, and I'll have a... Over there like that. Little claw. Break them there. Oh. They really are like little baby lobster, aren't they? And Henry, if you had a choice, this or lobster, what would you do? What would you have to eat? Hey, quite, I might be a little biased, but I think yabbies is the best crustacean in the world. Mm. I really do. It's been a wonderful day's fishing and now everyone's ready to eat. Henry's wife, Gloria, treats us to some smoked carp and a special fish dip, while Henry fries up some fillets of freshwater fish on the barbecue. Now, this is what I'm talking about, That's mulberry muffins. Gloria, this is what you're famous for down here at Clayton. Hmm? Mulberry Today muffins. <laughs> I can't look at them any longer. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Kurong is very special indeed, and we depart with great memories and a full tummy of freshwater fish, cockles and yabbies. Much of inland South Australia was opened up by river boats, steaming up and down this great waterway. And we're going to be doing the same on board the Proud Mary.
This is a very relaxing way to travel as the river carves its way to the sea through wetlands and deep gorges. The captain and crew go out of their way to make us feel welcome as we cruise slowly down this timeless river. So we decide to cook dinner for everyone at the next port. Today we're at one of the most beautiful spots along the River Murray. We're at historic Manham and we've just pulled up with the proud Mary behind us. You can see it there, we had a wonderful trip. Tonight's pretty special though because we've been asked to cook for the captain. We're going to do a Murray Callop, which is a freshwater fish, which is this lovely Murray Callop. And we're also going to show you how to prepare it by scaling it with an old soup spoon and also how to fill it as well. And just scull all the way along and come around there and uh, that fish is scout. And then we rinse it, Michael, and ready for it. Okay, now you better fill it this because the captain's waiting. I tell me he is waiting too. So come along, the backbone. Mm -hmm. Now if then, you didn't want to fill it, could you actually bake that whole? Yes, we're going to actually steam a whole fish mm -hmm. in with lemongrass. Beautiful. So we cut down there. and then So we, who's going to eat the fillet? Oh, I think we might, <laughs> might taste before the captain gets it. And then we come over the ribs. And again, don't rush it no. to get maximum amount of meat and cut around. Beautiful. And that's how you prepare the Murray Callop as a fillet. Michael, you know, there's nothing better than seasoned flour. It is. We're using black cracked pepper and sea salt. It, we're going to get more flavour in the fish fillets than actually trying to season them afterwards. When we've cooked it, we've sealed the surface mm -hmm. and those flavours don't go through. So we're just going to dust them on both sides. We're using peanut oil, again, just to highlight the flavour of the fish. I might just put a little bit of uh, sesame oil in this peanut oil. Just, just a little, little, little bit of a bit taste. Not a lot. Taste. Not a lot. Here we are. Okay, so we've dusted them. So first we're going to, we've got a non-stick uh, fry pan. We're going to put skin side down first. And then usually, depending on the intensity of your heat source, it'll probably take uh, about and a minute to a minute and a half to do one size, flip them over and do the other size. Oh, okay, there we are then. That's, we can turn that over. I reckon we'll turn it over. Mm -hmm. That's about a minute and a half on one side. Mm -hmm. And I love leaving the skin on fish because it's crunchy to eat. It also retains all the flavour and keeps the moisture mm. of the, the flesh in as well too. Well, that's cooked, Michael. Look at that, eh? Yeah, there, about a total of three Whoops. minutes. There we are. Look at that. We're starting to get that lovely golden flavour. Mm-hmm. I'm better at potting up plants, you know. You Sarah. Look are. at that. And they are. Superb. That looks fantastic. And Michael, have a look at this. Was that lovely? While we've been cooking that, <laughs> one of my very old friends from a tour in England, she a gardening is. tour that I took in 1994, lives here at Manham, and she's just made homemade tomato sauce. That'll be perfect to serve with this Murray Callop. I'll just get the fillets out of the way. OK, here are the cockles. This is what the captain is going to be absolutely delighted with. Right, Michael, can you get the wok and I'll just explain how we're going to prepare these okay. cockles. We're going to use the Curon cockles. We've got some sliced uh, French shallots. We've got spring onions. Fresh sliced garlic and also ginger. We prefer to slice it because it doesn't take away all the juice. Here's the secret ingredient, the exo cognac mm. we're going to use. And there's some of it missing I now, Michael. That. Hope it's the sun that evaporated. <laughs> Sesame oil. We've got peanut oil, black bean sauce, and also we're going to use as a base homemade chicken stock to finish it off. About that much of the French mm -hmm. shallots, the spring onions, and we'll just soften those a little bit, Michael, with some, again with some fresh garlic fresh ginger and we'll just soften those up. Okay, that's sizzling away, Michael. You can smell the ginger, oh, can't you? Unbelievable. All right, we put in a little of that uh, chicken stock, mm -hmm. let those flavours combine. A very generous amount of uh, cognac, <laughs> just to make sure it's dominant. <laughs> oh. Very dominant. Oh dear. I think as it's evaporating, that's... it's quite intoxicating. <laughs> Sesame oil, uh, just a few drops. Look at that, Ooh, that gives it a yep, real flavour. And uh, there's that uh, black bean sauce. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. It's starting to uh, thicken up a little bit it too. It is. Beautiful sauce. And I'll there. throw in the uh, oh, cockles. Cockles, here we come. I don't know if the captain's going to get this, Michael. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Actually, we've got to get back home, so we need a left home, don't <laughs> we? Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. There's a few more to go. And then and, uh, we'll put the lid on in a minute. Yeah, we're going to put the lid on. And that should take uh, a few minutes to steam. And I'm really going to test you later. The lid on it. There goes the lid. And with the intensity of the heat, depending on your heat source, either two or three minutes. So um, actually we can watch these being done. Mickey, I reckon we should turn off the flame. Okay. Oh, Michael, Michael look at that. Are definitely ready. Have a so, look at that. Uh, I think because you've been a good stirrer, I think you should try okay. one. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, boy. And that was only about two and a half minutes to do oh. that. Oh, it's stunning. Michael, I'm just wondering, do you think the captain's getting too much food tonight? I mean, we've there's two dishes down. We've well, had an appetizer with the cockles. <laughs> he's had the fillets as an uh, uh, entree. And now we're going to do the steam um, callop in lemongrass flavours. So this is a very Thai dish. A very, very Thai dish. Now, in the wok, bubbly, in the wok bubbling away, we've got that uh, homemade chicken stock. Mm -hmm. So if you can make a bed with some of these uh, ingredients. Okay, these yeah. are baby spinach leaves, yeah, which is true. Oh, yeah. the lemongrass. Yeah, so put that got, in first. So we've got a bit of a base because all these flavours are going to steam. Mm -hmm. So we actually make a bed to put the fish on. So if you could do that. A little bed, a little bed for the fish. And what I'm going to do now is just kind of score the fish because it's been okay. scaled, it's been gilled and gutted. So I'm going to cut three scores either side of the fish. It's a nice little bed. It is. <laughs> and uh, in the cavity, Michael, I'm going to put inside of it. Some of the some of the lemongrass. Mm -hmm. Again, so we get all those flavours. Some coriander, spring onions, garlic, and ginger. That's a lovely mixture. And shallots. Mm -hmm. And of course, a little bit of chili. Mm. I know you were very careful in cutting up the chili. Absolutely. So that'll fill up the cavity. A bit of lime, lemon. Yeah, lemon. Just season it with the lemon and a bit of lime on mm. the side. And again, repeat it on the other side of the fish. A little bit of salt and pepper. Yep. And uh, I'll put that in, you can put some mm -hmm. salt and pepper. And that's going to provide our steaming base. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, going to put some pepper. Right. And all those flavours are going to come on. Beautiful. You can start seeing they're releasing their flavours now. And then on top, Michael, just going to throw a bit more coriander. A bit of chilli. <laughs> Love the chilli. Does he like chilli? I certainly do. <laughs> no, no, Spring. the captain. I think he will <laughs> after this. More shallots. And the uh, shallots. Oh, and you can just smell the Yeah, and just a, maybe a little touch mm -hmm. of uh, sesame oil mm -hmm. as well. Just a couple little drops. And I think a little bit of black bean sauce mm -hmm. in that to stop, just give it some of the flavour. A little bit of black bean sauce. Voila. And we'll put the stir it all on. up, put the lid on. And that fish should take about uh, five to eight minutes to steam. Well, let's have a look. That oh, is definitely Michael. cooked, Michael. All those lovely lemongrass, the coriander, mm. all those lovely Asian flavours that come through that. Uh, and that was about eight minutes, that whole eight fish to steam. Minutes. There we are. With that lovely base with black bean sauce, a bit of sesame. Look at that. I'll tell you what, huh? maybe we How might avoid the captain is, tonight. How good is and that? that? lovely Murray, Murray callop. Michael, a meal fit for a river captain. This, Michael, is a masterpiece. It is sensational. It all came together, didn't it? Yes, yeah, beautiful. Beautiful River Murray callop steamed in those lovely Asian flavours. The yabbies that we cooked with Henry Jones in that dill sauce with mm. his little seeds and his ingredients. We've got the Kurong cockles that we've done in that cognac exo sauce. Homemade dill mayonnaise together mm -hmm. with the yabbies and the Murray callop fried in seasoned flour, served to the captain now on the Proud Mary. For uh, Robert, uh, a steamed Murray callop with Asian flavours and pan-fried uh, callop fillets in seasoned flour with a homemade sauce from Betty from Manham. And Mickey's got the platter. And the piece de resistance, Michael. They have oh, turned out some wow. Ladies and gentlemen, here's to the two Michaels for producing us with such a beautiful meal. 
Cheers to Michael and Michael. Cheers. Well, sadly, that's our last program in our very first series of Out of the Blue. And Michael, I have to say, we've sort of been everywhere, all around the place. It's been a great adventure. We've met some fantastic people, cooked some wonderful seafood, caught some great product. And we actually followed Matthew Flinders, the way he charted his way around the southern coast of Australia. Didn't Isn't get it? lost, did we? We, we didn't get no. lost. We followed his maps. Absolutely. <laughs> Very good. But anyway, we've had a marvellous time, Michael. So, thanks for all your recipes. Thank you for joining me on the journey. And uh, once again, we may well see you out of the blue.